I was at the 2023 Sweetwater Gear Fest event, and while we were there, I got to check out a ton of gear. I also got to see the new Paul Reed Smith Tele style guitars. I did a deep dive of the Miles Kennedy and the NF53, and Sweetwater was kind enough to let me stay after hours, use a room to take them apart and check them out. I did the Miles Kennedy. You can check out that video down below. This is the NF53. The first thing you're going to notice a difference on is this does not have locking tuning keys. Although they are brass shafts like the Miles Kennedy, these are non-locking and that's a strange decision. They also have plastic or ivory style tuning keys. They both have the bow nut. The Miles Kennedy version has a rosewood veneer on the headstock and locking tuning keys. 22 medium jumbo nickel frets. They both have maple necks that are three pieces where you have the fretboard then of course the scarf joint. And I'll actually show you how they do this. In the past, I've shown you how manufacturers do scarf joints, but in this case, I'm gonna show you actual footage right here of them making a neck. This is exactly how this neck was put together. They both use ash bodies. They both are also 25 and a half inch scale. And this one came set up at just about two to 2.25 millimeters. So about two millimeters, or should I say 0 0.08. So, Action is just slightly higher on this one. So let's go ahead and check the nut slot. And you can see right here, a little trick we'd like to do, push down on the third fret, and just to see how much play is in between the fret and the string. There's a little bit, but not much. These look great. This nut is done really, really well. This has a 10 inch radius, and I think this neck feels exactly like the DC3 NF3 they did in the past. Very similar to a pattern regular neck. Now let's go ahead and check the frets on the NF53. And they feel almost identical. You can see no marks whatsoever. I thought I felt a snag, but nothing. I'll double check it, double check it. And again, oh, a little mark right there. But again, pretty much nothing. Let's go ahead and check the base side. And absolutely nothing. Fantastic. Now looking at the bridge, we can see it's the same bridge you see on the Paul Reed Smith Vela. It's got the brass compensated saddles, it's top loaded, and essentially what they did is they took a great bridge that's on the Vela and they put it on this guitar. Let's go ahead and do the cheese grater test and same thing, just nothing at all there. No grub screws sticking out, rounded corners. It feels pretty pleasant, especially if you're used to Tele style uh, guitars. You know, sometimes those Tele bridges, especially with the brass, uh, shared brass saddles, they could get unruly, and this feels really good. The NF53 comes with a deluxe PRS gig bag. Let's talk about the price. This guitar is $2,900, which is odd because the Miles Kennedy, which is a signature guitar, is the same price. For reference, the PRS S2 Vela is $1,750, or you can get it in satin for $1,550. You can get the Nags Chop Tank for about $4,000, the Fender Ultra Tele for about $2,149, the Godan Stadium for anywhere between $1,100 to $1,400, or I spec'd out a Kiesel with similar features, and that was sitting around the $1,500 to $1,600 mark. This is two direct mounted pickups where the Miles Kennedy has one pickup mounted to the pickguard. This pickguard is just for facade. There's nothing underneath there. You have a volume and tone, but there's no push pull and you have a three-way blade switch. It also has the same carve here and the same styling, which is the arm carve and the belly carve. So essentially what you're changing out with the two is standard tuning keys, different style pickups and less electronics combinations are the biggest key factors. The other thing they share in common is the same kind of bolt neck bolt pattern. One thing they do have different though is the gloss nitro cellulose lacquer on the back of the neck, but the fretboard is satin where the Miles Kennedy is satin on both the back and the fretboard. Let's go ahead and look at the electronics. Okay, so let's take a look inside here. You can see, actually look at this, definitely routed different. So it's not like they're using the same bodies and just saying, okay, these necks are the Miles Kennedy. This is a definitely definitely differently routed body. Look at, this is a solid piece right here. When we saw the Miles Kennedy, this was all taken out. The pickup is definitely different. It's a molded looking pickup. Reminds me of a P90 humbucker. <laughs> it's kind of what it looks like to me, uh, that kind of vibe to it. So very different. So very different pickups, very different route patterns. I mean, I'm sure they could be using the same type of wood blanks when they make these, it's possible. That's kind of cool, because sometimes companies just take one model and repackage it a little bit, call it two different things. This looks like they really took the effort to make two totally different guitars. Obviously a difference in the pickups, uh, the bridge pickup and the 
NF53 is 8.49K. For reference, the Miles Kennedy pickup was 6.56K. And the neck is sitting at 8.88K. Let's do that again. Yep, you're not mistaken. The neck has more winds than the bridge. So uh, that's a little different. You see that sometimes, but not always in guitars. So might see this thing having a little bit more kick in the amp and then a little bit more low end frequency too. And again, for reference, the neck pickup on the Miles Kennedy was 5.39. Looking at the back, you can see this is also flush mounted. And if we take this plate off, we'll see that they also have copper shielding on the back. Looking inside, we're gonna see a three-way blade switch to uh, basically, I think these are, yeah, zero friction, zero friction potentiometers. So you have the volume here, and then of course your tone control, and there's your capacitor for your tone control. And then of course, this also has a treble bleed. Very consistent in those two models. A lot less wiring stuff going on, but still very clean work. Here's a little something to mention. These are top loaded. The strings are top loaded. They're not through the body. And you can see right here, let me show you one. You can go in right here and they just hook right into there, like so. The NF53 is available in black, black dog hair, blue Mateo, white dog hair, and McCarty Sunburst. On the nut, we are looking at 42.17 millimeters or 1.660. And on the 12th fret, we're at 52.48 millimeters or 2.066. And for reference of how thick the neck is, the neck is at the first fret, it's 22.62 millimeters or 57 64 And at the 12th fret, it's 24.58 millimeters or 31 30 seconds. This is normally where we would use a template to see what kind of shake this is. Unfortunately, I'm remote, so I don't have the templates, but this is definitely a C shape to my hand. It is very pattern regular feeling. If you're familiar with the term pattern regular with PRS, it has a very pattern regular feel. Not thin, obviously, because I gave you the measurements, but not super chunky. Um, so it's it's a very comfortable neck that is not thin. If you like a, just a slight, and I mean very slight, chunky fill, just like I said, it's not going to feel chunky, but it's going to feel just a little bit, a uh, little bit thicker than your normal thinner neck. Let's go ahead and check the fretboard edges, and these are actually highly rolled edges, definitely has that vintage rolled feel. You can even see it's rounded here, very pleasant. And like I said, with those polish ends on the sock test, you can see. One mistake I made doing this video was I forgot to do the handshake test or film it, I should say, for the NF53. However, it's identical to the Miles Kennedy in the way it feels. So I'm gonna show you the handshake test with the Miles Kennedy so you understand that they're both identical. So we have a tradition on this channel, it's called the handshake. That's where we take the guitar and grab it from behind the neck like so to see how it feels with your hand right here. And this actually feels exactly like the old NF3 and DC3, if you guys remember that. It's very rounded, it's comfortable right there. There's nothing poking you because it's not squared off, but it's also very thick right there. See, there's a lot of space right there. So, I mean, it's definitely not gonna be, you know, convenient for a lot of you guys that really wanna play really up high and shred, kinda of get in there. It's hard for me to get my fingers in that position. Now, one thing is nice is they did this cutaway right here and that does help as the angle helps putting your hand right there. But overall, that's not something I think you're gonna be buying this guitar for. Very cool, but Handshake is the same as a Fender, but probably not better than a Fender. So like I said, I was at Sweetwater at night, so I was able to not only go through the guitar like I've shown you, I was able to go ahead and play it and give you some sound samples just to give you reference of all the sounds. So let's get into that. We're going to go ahead and check it out and clean. I absolutely... I just kind of like this vibe. This is good. If you like tellies, if you like tellies with P90s or tellies with uh, mini humbuckers, uh, all of those versions, you would dig this. It's definitely a, a just a warmer sounding tell. That sounds great. Let's go to the middle position.
And of course, let's check out the neck. That's just beautiful sounding. There. Nice. Um, let's go ahead and try some overdrive and see how the pickups re react to that. This is definitely a little bit more throaty. Wow, neck pickup. Same thing, just cleans up a lot. Before we finish the sound test, I thought it'd be nice to do a side-by-side -side to hear how the Miles Kennedy and the NF-53 sound since we're playing through the same rig. What are my final thoughts on the new NF-53? Well, since making this video, I have done a podcast, and on the podcast, I was asked this question, and I think the way I answered on the podcast is going to encapsulate it so well that I'm just going to post the clip. When you compare the, the new uh, NF-53 and the Miles Kennedy to the S2 line, the S, uh, not the SE, the um, CE line, it was more, it, that guitar costs more than my, than this, look. I bought this last year. This is my hard-earned money I spent this money on this. Uh, this is a CE24 semi-hollow with an absolute, look at that top. It's absolutely gorgeous, right? Um, it's a gorgeous guitar. It plays great, looks great. The, I, I can't imagine, I think I paid, sorry, I think I paid 26 for that guitar um, from Wildwood. That sounds right. Maybe it was so to me, I was like $200 more, $300 more. Just so everyone is on the same page, as of recording the video today, the guitar I bought is now $27.29, which is still $170 less, but more than I paid. I don't understand it. So I think that's where the miss is. I think a lot of people think it's cool. I think the guitar is cool. There's no question about liking the guitar. I like it. Would I buy it? No, I wouldn't buy it. And if you like it a lot, you wanna pay three grand for it? I mean, please do. I said it in the Miles Kennedy review, and I'm going to say it again here. I think if they make an SE at that price point, this guitar is going to be a lot of fun to check out. As I said, I like the guitar. It's just not for me right now. That's why I try to give you as much detailed information in the video so you can make your own educated decision on something if you're interested in it. And as always, I want to thank you so much for spending that time with me. Until the next time, know your gear.